Yes, people, welcome back. Um, I thought I'd make this video because it's extremely relevant to me right now. Um, and with clubs being back open, I think it could be a bit of a game changer for people um, to utilise. So, basically, went out last night, a bit hungover. Um, so, I thought I'd talk about my hangover um, stack in a way uh, to mitigate uh, all the effects of alcohol um, and what it has on the body. So, um, I'll be attaching references um, in the description, in the comments, etc., um, for you to follow along with. Okay, so let's go first through what alcohol does to, to the body. I'm going to be reading off my laptop here, so and I'll expand on whatever. So, it lowers sodium, potassium, selenium, magnesium and zinc levels. It lowers vitamins A, D, E, K and B vitamins. It, dep it depletes choline in the body and in the brain. It reduces REM sleep. It increases diuresis, leading to dehydration and increased blood pressure. It leads to inflammation of the gut uh, lining and can create uh, intestinal permeability. It can cause hypoglycemia, so poor blood sugar management. It can suppress the immune system. It causes stress of nearly all endocrine organs, um, liver, pancreas, etc. Uh, it can cause vomiting and nausea. It can cause anxiety. Uh, basically, that stress that you wake up in the morning and you think, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> that shit. And it can cause mitochondrial damage. So we're just going to talk through now um, what significance um, this has, each thing, um, and what interplay it has with the systems of the body. So lowered sodium, you can see an increase in blood pressure, um, a decrease in muscle and nerve function, and which is why we can see um, in alcoholics a regularity in um, actual cramping. Um, on their muscles because they've got decreased uh, muscle and nerve function. Lowered electrolytes, so it's poor cell hydration um, and thus a down regulation of every bodily function. So you're just not functioning as well at all. Choline depletion, um, so which causes uh, poor regulation of memory, mood, intelligence, brain function and development. Um, and it's also seen uh, in patients with people, um, in patients with muscle and liver damage, um, so obviously it's not ideal. And when we're on a hangover, this is exactly what we suffer from uh, in terms of symptoms: memory, poor memory, shit mood, <laughs> lack of intelligence, um, and brain function. It's all the standard, um, you know. So then, with uh, a reduction in REM sleep, um, you have poor memory formation um, and during REM sleep also we have an uncoupling um, of emotions uh, which make, make you more likely to suffer um, depression and anxiety type symptoms if you're lacking in REM sleep um, and it's also um, why we see treatment um, actually for anxiety and depression um, where people have their arms across their body to comfort, themse comfort themselves um, and have uh, your eyes looking left and right to emulate rapid eye movement sleep and you and you talk about whatever event that um, is emotionally troubling for you so you can get through it um, and that's used in psychology and treatment um, yeah pretty damn interesting or oh, fucking nerd anyway um, You've got information and permeability, what does that do? Obviously an increased risk of gastrointestinal disorders, uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, candida, um, yeast infections, uh, skin problems, they all stem from the gut, um, and downstream hormonal imbalances, so estrogen dominance in women, um, hypothyroidism, all these things, um, if it's if you have too much of intestinal permeability or inflammation in the gut, this, this is what can happen. Um, and 
not saying it happens just from one bout of binge drinking or one bout, of, you know, but an accumulation of it over time, um, linked with a poor dietary habits, uh, you know, it can easily um, sort of exacerbate or just happen, <laughs> you know. So um, you also have poor blood sugar regulation, which leads to insulin resistance, which means the calories that you consume um, bias more to um, fat instead of muscle, um, which is not good for gains or body composition. Um, and this insulin resistance leads to systemic um, inflammation of the body. Um, and it's, it's a major root cause of a lot of disease states um, for a hell of a lot of people. Um, so we want to be insulin sens sensitive, not insulin resistant. Resistant, so we want to manage that uh, blood sugar. It causes oxidative stress, alcohol does, um, which is just basically set, um, stress on each of the cells in your body, um, and we don't like that. Um, <laughs> it causes vomiting and nausea. I mean, I don't have to tell you really much. It's just fucking grim. <laughs> it's uh, it's not enjoyable one bit, um, you know. So that's not great. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, and then anxiety. So, as I said before, it's the stress when you wake up and not knowing what you've done, but you know you've upset someone. I've been there before so many times, it's not worth it, mate. <laughs> um, it can also cause mitochondrial damage, so it's a dysregulated function of all bodily systems caused by cell death, um, and thus inflammation of uh, surrounding cells caused by this. Uh, senescent or dead cell, which is sort of causing um, inflammation if it's not been removed. Um, yeah, so with all of that, fuck me, how do we go about fixing it? What's in the supplement stack and what's in the dietary stack, Mr. Uh, DBC? Well, when, so we're gonna break it into two portions, when you're drinking and the next day, um, because we can prove be preemptive um, with reducing the hangover. Okay, so when drinking, we want to have water to counteract the diuretic effect um, of alcohol. Um, we want low salt in that water to increase. Uh, so it's a, a lo low salt is a brand where it's reduced sodium salt. Um, so it's a mix, a one to one ratio of sodium and potassium. Um, so you get your sodium and potassium, uh, which it depletes anyway, um, allows for better hydration, better blood pressure control, um, yeah, and helps you hydrate better, so why the fuck not? Okay, next, then we have, we take, uh, this is when drinking by the way, I've not already mentioned it, so have that water in between um, drinks. Um, zinc carnosine, so this uh, is a a pre preventative measure, somewhat of uh, gut inflammation and intestinal permeability. Zinc carnosine is generally, generally used in a lot of uh, functional medicine practice practitioners' um, gut protocols to uh, heal uh, the gut lining. Plus, alcohol depletes zinc, so two for one, baby. Okay, so then we move into uh, liver detoxification supplements as obviously all your alcohol is metabolized by the liver um, and your liver is going to be put on under a shit ton of stress um, to do so, so we might as well fucking support it, right? Yeah, so phase one liver detox, we use milk thistle. Um, so milk thistle is used uh, to treat alcoholic liver disease um, in practice. So, you know, if the doctors are doing it, why can't we? Um, N-acetylcysteine for phase two, DOS, uh, do, um, yeah, uh, can't think of any other words for two, two, phase two, um, uh, yeah, N-acetylcysteine, so NAC, um, it plays a role in liver, phase two liver detox, it's also neuroprotective, um, so for the brain, um, a precursor to glutathione, the master antioxidant in the body, um, and we want to be 
um, loading on antioxidants when we're having all this oxidative stress caused by excess alcohol consumption. Big bonus. Um, NAC is not the most bioavailable form, though you can get uh, NACET, NASET, or if uh, you don't mind pinning yourself and injecting injectable glutathione and do the thing, do the bit. Next, um, whilst uh, we want, so we want to manage blood sugar levels, um, we can use berberine, uh, which is commonly used to manage blood sugar levels. Um, and it also actually, um, in research, has been found to have, uh, to fight the immunosuppressive effects of alcohol um, via the manipulation of gut microbiota. Um, so, you know, you just get less sick, I guess, or less ch less chance chances of being sick, you know. Uh, then we move on to CoQ10 slash ubiquinol. So ubiquinol is basically CoQ10, but it's the most bioavailable form, the best one basically for your body in terms of uh, uptake and absorption. Um, so that is an enhancement of mitochondrial function um, and cell damage prevention. Um, so on a cellular level, uh, we are uh, muy bueno. Lion's mane is the next one. Lion's mane taken pre-bed. Um, so just with everything else that's been listed, you can take most of these things uh, just while you're drinking. Well, zinc in 15 to 30 mill milligrams. Milk thistle and then acetyl cysteine, you can take between drinks or whatever you want really. Berberine, you only have to take it once um, with a drink or whatever. Uh, water, just in, bet in between alcoholic drinks. Lion's mane, just take it pre-bed. Um, the reason we use lion's mane is an increase in REM sleep. Um, fantastic, because that is what alcohol reduces, so you can increase the fucker. Um, and it also reduces uh, intestinal inflammation and tissue, 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 tissue damage. So um, again, bang for your buck. So that's on the day. Now, the next day. Everything that was listed there, you can use on the next day. Um, same thing applies, you know, the problem don't go away. You, your body's still metabolizing and dealing with that alcohol. So uh, we can utilize them again. So next, we're gonna want to replace vitamins A, E, B, uh, selenium and choline dietarily um, to the best that we can because obviously these things are depleted. I'm just going to mention a few things for each nutrient uh, that you can include in your diet here. Vitamin A, carrots, vitamin E, sunflower seeds, selenium, uh, Brazil nuts, um, vitamin B1, beef, um, Good boys, beef mince, um, really, to be fair, um, is it's easier to break down, um, especially if you have that, uh, you've got lining damage, we don't want to really be eating inflammatory foods on the day of the hangover. And then we've got choline with eggs. Sweet. Okay, then we're going to have um, a little bit of a spice, um, ginger. Um, we can use that for phase three liver detox, uh, detoxification, um, which is just excretion. So uh, you get like all your metabolites, your liver is either excreted through urine uh, or um, stool. So uh, it helps with that. Um, it's a prokinetic, so it helps you get to the toilet. Um, and it also com combats nausea and vomiting. Um, it's you. It has efficacy in um, chemo patients um, for preventing um, vomiting and nausea. So why can we not take it if we're just a bit hanging? Yeah, okay then. Um, then we move into uh, another supplement, a methylated vitamin B complex. Why methylated? Because that's how we absorb it. It has to be metho methylated otherwise your body won't absorb the B bits. Um, the vitamin, so basically vitamin uh, B12 deficiency increases choline demand. Um, and we're all 
we already have a demand for choline as it's been depleted um, by the alcohol. Um, so we just don't want to exacerbate that. So we take the B vitamins basically. Okay, so next we've got a nootropic. Interesting, ooh, brain shit. <laughs> okay, alpha GPC. That is alpha GPC. Uh, G, good. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, so it counteracts the choline deficiency. Um, it improves uh, mental and physical performance. Um, something that when you are hanging, you're lacking. You're, you're lacking the ability for your mind to work properly, for your body to want to do anything. Um, so it can improve that. Um, oh yeah. Then. Um, we have magnesium taurinate, specifically taurinate. The reason being is we've got magnesium because it's depleted um, via the consumption of the alkaloids. Um, and taurinate component, the taurinate component helps combat the anxiety that you're feeling for the anxiety. Um, so it's just like a little wonder supplement. Um, if that's not strong enough, you could take taurine at three grams a day. Um, for that day uh, to help with the anxiety if you if you have it um, next we're going to be moving into uh, a vitamin C uh, super dose I normally advise or use it and super dose it um, a couple of grams maybe um, because it has efficacy when you're ill and the onset uh, and it's been seen when people have an onset of cold and flu like symptoms uh, it is reduced and it's a it's an antioxidant that we can utilize uh, to combat and combat the extreme oxidative stress that, we're, that uh, the alcohol has caused next we go on to the final supplement uh, which is probably one that you should be taking every day anyway uh, vitamin d3 with vitamin k2 um, the fact it's with um, there's a synergistic effect here um, however, um, it's just replacing uh, what was lost and been depleted um, in terms of body alcohol and it is in its most bioavailable form so we can uptake it uh, very well. You know, fantastic. Okay, so, and then we're going to have an overarching uh, dietary approach as well on the hang of the day. If you, if you can resist getting a takeaway or whatever, I know it's hard, but you know, these things do help. Um, yeah, okay, so we're gonna have a diet rich in antioxidants, polyphenols, polyphenols and epicacogens. The mouthfuls. Okay, so examples of, of this are dark chocolate, um, blueberries and uh, green tea, or green tea extract, potentially 500 mix milligrams um, on the epicatechin side um, basically just to reduce the oxidative stress uh, reduce the inflammation um, not even inflammatory foods anyway um, and also have adequate hydration to the point that you your it or your wee wee <laughs> is clear um, or a light straw color um, that'll ensure that you're pretty well fucking hydrated and everything's functioning uh, dandly dooly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's all um, for the hangover of Cure. Um, if anyone wants the references, well, I'm just going to put them in anyway, so fuck it. Fuck you if you don't want the references. <laughs> They're going in there. Um, read them or don't. Don't really matter to me. Um, but yeah. It's all based off scientific research, this, um, and obviously because I'm referencing uh, it, you can see it. Um, but yeah, here's to no hangovers, boys and girls.